Last year, we got a couple of smartphones like the Xiaomi Mi 10T Pro that could record in 8K, that is video in 8K resolution. And I was sort of curious, just how well does this thing perform compared to something like a Sony full frame camera indoors? Let's check it out. Hey, my name is Tom. If you're new to this channel, a like would be highly appreciated. If you want to see more videos like this one, which is just about cameras and stuff like that, consider hitting that subscribe button and a notification bell for more videos like this one. Okay, sorry for the pitch, guys. I know you have busy lives. Let's just get into it. So this is something that I've wanted to try for a couple of months now, ever since I got the Xiaomi Mi 10T Pro. Now, this is not my main smartphone, my driver, so to speak. I'm stuck with an iPhone 12 Pro. I sort of prefer the iPhone for other reasons, but the cameras on the Android smartphones are always just a lot more fun to play around with. So that's why I got it. Basically something to play with, the 108 megapixel capabilities and the 8K capabilities of this thing. So before we get into the test, uh, I just wanna mention a couple of things about 8K on smartphones. So there are the different sensors and they handle 8K in different ways. Now. From my understanding, the 8K on the Xiaomi Mi 10T Pro is not actual 8K. It's actually more something like 6K upscaled to 8K and they call it AI 8K. But regardless of that, it shoots in a higher resolution than the Sony full frame camera. And so this test is a very unscientific test where we're just gonna compare images. We're gonna sort of zoom in and see what we get. Now, a little bit about the settings. The full frame camera that I will be using for this test is the Sony a7C. I'm recording in 4K, ISO 500. I'm using a Tamron lens, 28 to 75. And unfortunately on the Xiaomi Mi 10T Pro, I can't actually tell what ISO setting this is. I've been trying to look at the files themselves that I get out of this thing and it doesn't really reveal anything about ISO, but I can imagine that the ISO is pretty high. So just looking at the ISO values, not a very fair test. The reason why I picked ISO 500 on the Sony full frame is because I was sort of matching the colors. I was sort of trying to increase it so it looked like to be on the same level. And that's why the image is very comparable. Just looking at this image, and of course this video here on YouTube is in 4K, so I suppose you can say that the so-called 8K, which is upscaled 6K to 8K, is downscaled to 4K, if that makes sense. What you're seeing here is just what it looks like in full pixel readout. I gotta say, I'm very, very pleased with the 8K image. To be completely honest, I prefer the 8K image coming from, a, from the Xiaomi Mi 10T Pro. Now, the reason for this is probably because there is a lot of AI and algorithms and stuff like that, and they pretty much improve the image a bit better than the Sony a7C does. But you can sort of tell that the Sony a7C is kind of soft and the colors are kind of flat, but the dynamic range is a lot better. Like on the 8K footage, it seems like the blacks are a bit crushed. Honestly, just looking at the image side by side, my instincts pick the 8K. It just looks like a more pleasing image to be completely honest. And now, just for the hell of it, let's zoom in 200% on this image and see what we see, so to speak. Okay, so if we zoom in 200%, we can tell that there are some compression artifacts, but the image is pretty good. I would say it's still okay. The 8K seems to really shine with details and sharpness, but you can definitely tell that the blacks are crushed in a way that it's not on the full frame Sony. So, you know, if we're talking from perspective of editing video files in Final Cut Pro, 
like I would definitely prefer to use the Sony image here because I know that I can improve the sharpness, the colors and stuff like that. And on the 8K, it feels like I can hardly touch the image here because it would just destroy the image if I tried to, you know, increase brightness or increase the, the blacks of the image, like it would just not work. But I gotta say that the 8K image still impresses me. Like if you, you gotta, so remember here that we have zoomed in 200% and just looking at the image like that, I would say that the 8K is looking better, even though I would prefer the Sony a7C here. But now let's take a look at 400%. And now we can definitely tell that the 8K is extremely compressed. It's very noisy. And you can definitely tell that the details on the Sony full frame are better, but they are still very soft. But I still gotta say that I would prefer the Sony full frame here because I know that I can work with it a lot more. And so finally, just to see what would happen if I would, you know, sort of try to improve the image quality on the Sony a7C and not looking into colors or anything like that, let's just try to increase the sharpness with two and a half percent and let's see what happens. And boom. It is clear that even though 4K on the full frame is a lower resolution, you still have way more details. You got a lot of texture, so to speak. Now, I'm not saying that people should record things like this in order to be able to zoom in like this, but it is quite impressive. You sort of have to ask yourself, why are we seeing what we're seeing here? So looking at this test, I would say arguably that Sony a7C wins hands down. You can get a lot better image and way more information. And so full frame cameras definitely win, like no arguments there. But I'm sort of curious if the image on the 8K is poor because of the sensor size or, you know, the low light performance. Is it the low light performance? Is it the over sharpening? Like, I believe that if you were to shoot this outside, you would get much better results from the 8K footage. Like you could get more details and stuff like that. Like I have pretty good lighting in here, but it's not optimal for smartphones. So I am considering doing this test again when it's summer or at least more sunlight outside because right now here in Sweden, like the weather is just terrible. I can't even tell if it's snowing or raining. It's that bad. But you know, that's the thing about me. I'm a camera geek. I love it when smartphone manufacturers put in these sort of gimmicks because it just pushes technology further. I'm certain that a lot of camera developers have learned a lot from smartphones because the sensor is so tiny on a smartphone. They have to use all of that trickery in order to overcome those shortcomings, you know what I mean? And so they sort of push the envelope on how far you can take image quality, how much you can improve it with software. And I think that Sony and Canon are just starting to learn that you can do a lot with software. GoPro has definitely been taking notes on this one. And I've been a fan, a huge fan of smartphones improving cameras ever since I got the Samsung Galaxy Note 3. That was a long time ago, I know but it was the first smartphone that had 4K and it definitely had a sharper image than my Canon T3i, which is what I used back in the day. But I think I got pretty much similar results. Like the Canon had a softer image, but the colors were better and you could sort of increase sharpness a lot more than you could. Like you could improve the image a lot more than you could on the Note 3, but it was still so impressive to see that just out of the camera, you got a very sharp image coming out of the Note 3. And, you know, I definitely felt that the 8K image was just looking so much better than what came out of the Canon. It's only when you really zoom in that you start to notice what is better and what is worse. Anyway, that's all I have for today. Hope you enjoyed this video and put it in the comment section below which image you felt looked better. Do you agree with my conclusions or do you have different ones? I'd love to hear it. I'm just a guy on the internet. Let's talk. Let's get this discussion down in the comment section. So I have for today. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. I've got an itch I can't scratch. I'm missing a piece that completes a whole part of me. An open wound scar to see. Everybody come here, gather round. Welcome to the freak show, the best in town.
What the hell's wrong with me? I don't get along with anybody, honestly. I've been living in my own head constantly. Thoughts jumbled round. Think I need a new lobotomy. Wait. All these thoughts are too negative. I don't want to give 